Mortgages can be complicated, I get it. I'm a real estate appraiser and real estate broker and I see it all the time. Buyers get really confused when it comes to the process of choosing what type of loan product should I get when I go to buy a house. You go to talk to a loan pro and they're kind of directing you towards the product that they have on their shelves. Sometimes they're able to shop it out in the marketplace. Which one do you choose? Well, one of the biggest things that I get asked when it comes to buying a house is which loan product should I choose? Should I go with a conventional product or should I choose one that's backed by the government? Now, let me be clear here. I'm going to get into the differences in between conventional loan products and those backed by the government. But on the government side, there's actually tons of different types of government-backed loan options. Think of anything that ends with an A after it, that's going to be like an association. So you've got the FHA, that's the Federal Housing Association. You've got the uh, VA, which is the Veterans Affairs. You've also got USDA um, and anything else. If you've got a local authority, like I'm in Connecticut and there's the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority, anything with that sort of authority or administration behind it, probably backed by the government. Now, what's the reason that we have government-backed loans? Okay, let's get into it. The government backs certain loan products in order to encourage home ownership. They want more people to buy houses. Why? When more people buy houses, the actual economy gets stimulated even further. It's been said that over 80 to $100,000 gets inserted into the economy once someone closes on their property because they're likely going to need electricians, plumbers, uh, title insurance, all of these other things that goes into the economy, which uh, continues to stimulate it. So why should I get a government-backed product? Well, when you're buying a house, you probably have a few things that are on your mind. Number one, What's my monthly payment going to be like? Number two, how much can I borrow? Number three, what's it going to look like for my credit score? What can I actually get for a loan if I have a credit score that's great or not so great? What are those loan limits that actually show up? Meaning, can I get a government-backed loan for a really expensive property that I want? What about private mortgage insurance? What is that all about? And the last one, closing costs. How much am I going to have to bring to the closing table in order to get this mortgage? So let's talk about what a conventional loan is. So let's go back a few years. Before the government started backing loans, it was very typical. People would say, I need to put down 20%. And that was an actual realistic statistic because banks would want you to put a specific amount of money down, typically 20% or more, in order to buy a house. Well, the government realized that they wanted more properties to be sold, and so they decided to back these loans. Well, let's go over to the conventional loan uh, side right now. And the conventional loans are those that are sold on the secondary market as well and have conforming loan limits, or those that other banks that are out there on the secondary market, they'd want to buy those up. Now, your mortgage, I'm not going to get into this fully here, does not typically stay with the bank that you actually originate it with. So if you go to ABC Bank, they may help you originate a mortgage, but they're likely going to sell that on Wall Street as a pack of a large uh, tranche of mortgage-backed securities eventually at some point. Most of the time, you're going to make one payment to the original bank that you uh, originated the loan with, and then that loan is one once again, going to get sold and serviced somewhere else. Now, we're not going to get into that. You can watch a whole other video on loan servicing and uh, mortgage-backed securities, etc. But today, we're going to cover the differences in between that conventional and the FHA product. Okay, let's talk credit score. Well, the first thing is people typically have an idea for what their credit score is even before they start the loan process. But let me tell you this. There's all different types of credit scores that are out there. FICO credit scores, which are typically used when you're going to get a mortgage or other credit scores that you're going to use when you're going to get a car payment. All these are different types of credit profiles. And again, that's probably another video into itself. But the idea is, is you're going to want to know what type of loan products you actually qualify for with your credit score. So the first thing that I would do is go speak with your lender because lenders use a specific credit profile or a mix up that gives a specific credit score that lenders are looking for. And so you can go onto some free website in order to see what your credit score is, but it may actually be a little bit different than what you see when you go to the lender. They may pull up your credit score and say, hey, you've got a 720 credit score, but on your free app, it might show a 7. 60 or 680 or something like that. The reality is, is that there are different credit profiles that are out there and those credit profiles are going to qualify you for different rates on your mortgage. So your credit score really does matter here. Now, what should you do if you don't have such good credit? Well, let's go into what good credit is and not so good credit. Let's dig into conventional loan products. If you have a 620 credit score or better, you're highly likely in order to get qualified for a conventional loan product. Now, let me be clear. There's other factors that get involved, such as your debt to income ratio and any other obligations that you may have. But typically, 620 is the number where most conventional products are going to look to start 
and up from there, you can obviously get a better rate on your mortgage. If you're below 620 and you're on the conventional side, there may be some subprime options that are out there, but you really wanna look at that 620 number or better as the number that most lenders are gonna say, that's our target score or better in order to get a conventional loan product. Now, why would I get a conventional loan product? We're gonna get into that in a minute. Let's talk FHA and the credit scores there. Well, FHA is much less concerned about your credit score than a conventional loan product might be. On FHA loans, you can go as low as 580 on a credit score with a minimum down payment of 3.5%. That's right. You can have a 580 credit score putting down 3.5% and likely still get qualified for a mortgage to, in order to buy a house. That's incredible. Now, it even gets better from there. Some people might have a good amount of uh, money in the bank, and so they're able to put more of a down payment on the house that they're looking to buy. Let's say they went through a divorce and they have a decent amount of money in the bank still, but their credit score kind of got wrecked in the process of the divorce. They might have as low as a 500 credit score. This is a little bit of that subprime that I just referenced before, but with a larger down payment and FHA, you can likely still get qualified for a loan. It's pretty incredible. If you're thinking about buying a house and you thought my credit score is too low, definitely reach out. There may be some loan products here which might apply for you. Now, again, I cannot caveat this enough. There's a lot that goes into lending, different factors that go into qualification. So please don't take my word for it that you're absolutely that you're absolutely getting qualified for a loan if you have a 500 credit score. Now back to conventional loan products. Conventional loan products, some of them offer as little as a 0% down payment. So it's possible that you could have low down payment on this, but your credit score is gonna need to be a lot stronger than it would for an FHA. So two differences there. One is that credit score higher on conventional down payment. You might get a little bit less there on conventional than FHA. Now also to be clear here, there are things that are what are called either double underwrites or additional products. So there are instances in which you could have a down payment assistance program, which is government backed and an FHA product, wherein you wouldn't have to even put the three and a half percent down. You could put the zero percent down and still get qualified there. So two things to uh, you know consider, lower down payment, obviously getting you that better option. What the heck's a debt to income ratio? Well, that's the amount of debt to have in comparison and your monthly obligations of that debt to the income that's coming in to your household. So for instance, if you've got a $5,000 debt that you have to pay every single month and you bring in $10,000 every single month, you have a 50% debt to income ratio. Well, for some people they're like, okay, great, that's manageable for me. In lending, they're gonna have limits to the amount of debt to income that you can actually have wherein they feel comfortable giving you a loan. Well, if you have a little bit of a higher debt to income ratio, like the scenario I just mentioned, an FHA loan may be for you. FHA loan limits a lot of times for debt to income ratios can go as high as 50% in some cases, which means that you could have a monthly obligations of $5,000 and have the income of $10,000 and still get approved for a loan. In other cases, like if you have a conventional loan, those limits are significantly less. How much less? Somewhere around the tune of around 36% for a conventional loan. So if you have a little bit less on your monthly obligations for debt, this could include a lot of other variety of other factors, you may be able to get a great rate with a conventional loan because you have those lesser uh, obligations every single month. For this reason, those people who are maybe just even getting out of college still have college debt, they've got auto loans, those who have been through a divorce and have child support payments, all of those get included inside of your debt to income ratio because those are your monthly obligations. Also those with higher amounts on their credit cards with those monthly uh, minimums that are due, all of that gets considered into your debt to income ratio. So those with higher amounts that are in obligations every single month, FHA loan uh, requirements all the way up to 50% for that DTI may be something that you want to consider. So what's this thing called mortgage insurance and why do I have to pay for it? Why is it so much of my monthly payment? Well, it shouldn't be that much of your monthly payment. Usually typically around 0.03 to 0.07% of the entire loan value that you have along with some of your credit score implying on that. So obviously the uh, monthly insurance payment can be a little bit high there, but what it is is if you're not putting 20% down, on your mortgage, then the lender, those who are giving you the money, could be hundreds of thousands, if not a million dollars for your loan, probably want some sort of security that in the event that you default on your mortgage, they've got some sort of recourse. So those people who are lending you that money actually go to insurance companies and say, if in the case that this guy defaults on his loan, that they're gonna have some sort of recourse with the insurance company. And every month they're gonna pay those premiums in order to ensure that if you default, and so they're passing that those premium costs onto you 
in order for you to pay. So if you don't pay that, um, then you're not gonna get that loan unless you want to put down 20% or more. Now, FHA loans are required to have this, but there is good news if in fact you do buy a property and you see some of that appreciation that much of the market uh, shows you over the last 20, 30, 40 years of all of these home prices appreciation, when you have 20% in equity on your property, you can actually call up your lender, order an appraisal, and if you have 20% in, they will remove that PMI insurance cost from you. They're gonna remove the PMI away, so you don't have to pay that anymore. But that's something to be mindful of if you are not putting down 20%, whether on conventional or FHA, it's definitely gonna be required on the FHA. Conventional do have some other options here where they can go with what are called 80-10-10 loans or other options where they may not have that PMI associated with them. Let's talk interest rates and the differences in between conventional loan products and FHA. Where can I get the better deal? Well, conventional loan products may have a little bit of a higher rate, whereas many times we see that FHA has some better rates that are associated with them. Obviously, they're less concerned on the credit profile here because they'll go down to as low as, again, with that significant down payment, as low as 500 on the credit, sc uh, credit score. They'll go as low as 500 on the credit score. However, there is other fees that are associated with FHA loans. And so you may wanna look at what's called our APR rate. And that's gonna be able to compare all the loan products together along with any fees or costs that are associated with them. And in order to compare both, those FHA loans may eventually have a higher cost to the borrower than the conventional product does. So which one are you gonna get better a deal on? Well, that all depends on your credit profile and looking at those costs associated with an FHA loan and a conventional loan. My strong suggestion, I wish I could give you the answer straight up, but many times that conventional loan product may cost you less upfront in fees, et cetera, and the FHA loan may cost you more in fees over the long haul. You wanna compare those both on the APR and then look at how long you're gonna be in the property. That's the big key here as to how long you're gonna be in the property and the cost associated with that loan product for that time period, then compare the two together. Let's talk about how much you can borrow with an FHA loan versus a conventional loan. Well, people talk about these things called loan limits, and that's the amount that you can borrow with a specific loan, and the rest of it after that is gonna have to come as cash out of your pocket, or you're gonna have to get what's called a second mortgage on it, on a property. So let's say you wanna buy a million dollar property, and you're thinking about financing it because you don't have all the cash in the bank. Well, that's pretty typical. Well, a conventional loan limit, as of the filming for today, which is in 2023, goes up to a around $726,200. So everything after that is gonna to have to be brought to the table as cash, unless you're able to get a second mortgage on the property. So if you're there and you're thinking about buying a million dollar home, just realize that if you wanna go over that $726,200, you're either gonna to need to get that second mortgage or qualify what's called a jumbo loan, which is a second type of loan product under the conventional banner, which is going to include a much larger loan. There's further underwriting that's involved and some lenders just don't do them really well or don't do them at all. So please consider if you are looking at going over specific loan limits, that a jumbo loan product is something that you may wanna consider. Now, FHA similarly has loan limits, but those are also indicated around the country based upon how high the cost of that area is in order to live. So if you were in a low cost area versus a high cost area, if you're in New York City, which is probably a high cost area, or you may be in Mississippi, which may be a low cost area, those FHA loan limits are likely gonna vary significantly. How much are they gonna vary significantly? Well, could be around that 470,000 mark for Mississippi and some of those lower areas and probably over a million, a million, 89,000 for New York City or some of the other high cost areas that are out there. So once again, it's really important that you dedicate yourself to interviewing a couple of lenders in order to find some of the best trusted lenders that are out there. If you're not working with a, an agent team that's gonna be able to direct you to some of the most trusted pros that are out there, definitely get connected with one of those in order so they can uh, direct you to some of the best lenders that are out there who are not only local, but also national as well. Well, there's one more thing that you probably probably want to consider whenever you're deciding between a conventional based product or an FHA based product and that's called property standards. Now as a certified real estate appraiser I've seen this a ton over the years people who go to get FHA products they need to actually have the property conform to some HUD guidelines. Now HUD means the housing and urban development guidelines that are set out to make sure that anything that's government backed any housing that's government backed needs to follow a certain amount of guidelines and property standards. What does this mean? It actually means that the property can't have mold 
in it, cracked windows, chipping paint. If there are gonna be steps, then if there's more than three steps, it has to have a hand railing. Uh, there's a variety of health and safety items that the federal government wants to make sure, listen, if we're gonna back this property, if we're gonna back the loan on this property, then we wanna make sure that this collateral isn't dangerous. It's not dangerous to the person, so they're gonna get hurt on it. It's not gonna be uh, hazardous in that it's gonna fall apart, and so the person's gonna be left with overwhelming repairs, and that's gonna cost a lot of money, and then they're gonna default on their loan. They wanna make sure that the property's in a specific condition. So who determines that? It's the appraiser who is ordered from the bank to go out to the property and determine its value. They're the one who's gonna look at the property conditions and the property standards and make sure that they comply with HUD guidelines. Well, what happens if they don't comply? Well, this is actually a really big factor because many times people wanna get a product for a house. Well, many times people wanna actually get a mortgage for a house. They go out and bid on a property. They come to an agreed price with a buyer and the seller. And then all of a sudden they realize after the appraiser goes out and says, you know what? There's chipping paint on the house. We're not gonna approve the loan for this home because the bank can't write it and sell it to the government or on the secondary market backed by the government. So the deal's dead unless the seller actually corrects the condition or somehow the buyer's allowed to correct this condition as well in a professional manner. And so there can be a little bit of issue that shows up. My strong recommendation is that if you're going to get an FHA product for a house, have a solution with your agent, your team, who's ever working on this in the event that FHA items were to show up with a way that you can address these items as the buyer or that the seller is written into the contract that somehow they'll address these items or if they've got another strategy for you, then go ahead and trust them for that. Uh, my strong recommendation is just be mindful of these FHA property standards. For many of these, if you want them, they can be down in the description below for this video. We thank you guys so much for watching this. Hopefully this has been very helpful for you to watch our FHA and conventional loan products and uh, discussing the differences in between the both of them. Again, if you have any questions below, if you're a lender and you have more to comment about this, go ahead and comment below. We'd love for your input as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Go ahead and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video.